So guys, I write for months. Let's do something here. Linear systems and optimization. So, this is maths engineering. So we start with two vectors. Linear systems and optimization, there is a title. We're given, let's say we're given x1. x1 is equals to 0, 1. x2 is equals to 1, 1. Those are two vectors. Now we are asked to find the inner product of these two vectors. So the inner product formula is that inner product of x1 and x2 would be like this. So x1, x2 is a transpose of x1 multiplied by x2, which means we're going to transpose the x1, not the x2. Therefore, we have 1, 0, or 0, 1. In this case, we have to start with 0 first, 0, 1, and 1, 1. Therefore, multiply by 0 by 1 and 1 by 1. So, I um, have to show all the steps. Then we're going to add them. We need the sum of them. 0 by 1 is just 0, 1 by 1 is just 1. So the final answer is that the inner product of x1, x2 is equal to 1. This is the answer right there. I'm not sure if you are able to see that. The markers are finished, so I have to write in red. The inner product of x1 and x2 equals 1. That's what we got here from the previous answer. This is part 1, let's say. Now in part 2, we are asked to get the angle between the two vectors. This will be part 2. So to get the angle between the two vectors, x1 and x2, first of all, we have to get the norm or magnitudes of the vectors. We have to understand the magnitudes. Then once we have the magnitude of it, which I'm going to show you in a few minutes, the norm or magnitude of the two vectors, the formula of the norm is that uh, norm is equals to x, let's say xn, we give xn, norm xn is equals to xn divided by xn to the power of a half. There is a formula. Therefore, the norm of x1, x1, we give x1 and x2. First of all, we have to find x1. Would be equals to x1 is 1 over 0, which is the vector there. Equal to the transpose of x1 would be 0, 1 divided by the vector of x1.
So at the guys, someone can get robbed. It's all right. Now I'm getting the norm of x2. The fact of x2 is 1 over 1, which means by plugging the formula, we have the transpose of x2 multiplied by x2 itself. It should be 1 by 1 plus 1 by 1. It should be 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. But to get the norm of x2, it will be square root of 2. Now we have the linear pro inner product. We have got the norm of x1 and x2. We have to plot the formula of the cos or the angle of the two vectors. So the angle will be or cos theta is equal to inner product of the angle of the vector equals inner product the vector of uh, the norm of x1 multiplied by norm of x2 therefore the inner product as we call the previous the inner product is 1 the norm of x1 is the square root of 1 which is 1 multiplied by norm of x2 which is square root of 2 now we get 1 over square root of 2 1 over square root of 2, we can use calculator for that so there is no harm to use calculator in this case we have 1 divided by square root of 2 which gives us 1 divided by square root of 2 of 0 0.5 0 0.5 So therefore the cos theta is equal to 0 0.5 So we know that the inner product is 1 we got the angle between the two vectors, which is 0 0.5, which is between 1 and 0. So it is not exactly 0 or 1. Now we have to try to comment on what our result. But first of all, we have to draw a diagram of the two vectors to get a better understanding of what is going on. We have to draw a graph of x1 and x2 to conform, we call, to conform the angle we got of the two vectors. So x1 is 0, 1, which means just going straight in the, in the x direction, this is x axis, and this is a y axis. So x1 here is 0, 1, 0, 1 somewhere there. X2 is 1, 1. 1, 1 would be 1 on X side and 1 on the Y side. So it will go straight up. Which means it makes it like 45 degrees, but it is not because we have to use this side as well. So we are left with 90 degree there but this is what we got and therefore the comment is that these two vectors have a shared component the shared component because one angle is diagonal to the two angles which makes sense that they're shared component and if the shear component, this makes sense why we call the angle between the two vectors to be 0 0.5. If it was 1, if the angle was 1, that means the two vectors would be octagonal to each other, which means they're going in the same direction, they're pointing in the same direction, they're lying on the same vein or the same direction. If it was minus 1, we say they're octagonal but pointing different direction 
So the cos or the angle between the two vectors have to be 1, 0, and minus 1. But if it is decimal point, that means the two angles, the two vectors share a component of one angle is diagonal to one another. And that makes completely sense for what I was trying to say. The trick is that to get the angle, we have to get the norm of the vectors first, x1 and x2. After getting the norm, then we can plot the formula of the cos theta or the angle of the vectors, which is the inner product x1 and x2 of the norm of x1 multiplied by norm of the x2. That's why we call the angle 0.5. And to get the norm here, norm of x1 is x1 multiplied by, or is the transpose of x1 multiplied by x1 is over a half, which would give us, in this case, we got 1, but the norm of x1 is the square root of 1. The square root of 1 is just 1. And in the second case, the norm of x2, we got square root of 2. Then we plug them to get the cos theta or the angle between the two vectors, we got 0 0.5. In this case, the diagram is showed us that the answer of the angle between the two vectors are correct. What we call. And I've told you already the comment is that the two vectors share a component, they share a component. So it means they're not octagonal to each other, they're not lying in the same vein.